Welcome, my dear student friends, and uh, uh, welcome to everyone who's uh, following my uh, channel and uh, anyone who's uh, l listening to this um, uh, video. I'm Salah Abbas, I'm Associate Professor of uh, uh, Surgery at Deakin University in Victoria, Australia. Um, and today I chose a very important, very common uh, and uh, simple clinical topic in general surgery, and that's hemorrhoids. <clears throat> now, um, hemorrhoid, as uh, I say, is a very common uh, clinical uh, condition, and uh, despite the fact of uh, it being a relatively minor problem, uh, it causes a lot of uh, suffering in the uh, society. Um, now, I try to keep this to the uh, minimal and uh, yet uh, stay comprehensive so you can learn how to manage patients with uh, uh, hemorrhoids. We need to know the basics first. And the basics are hemorrhoids is nothing more than just prolapse of the anal cushions. Now, you will ask me what, what the anal cushions are. Anal cushions are a vascularized, discrete, small masses of thickened mucosa, and this is composed of a tuft of blood vessels, uh, an artery, and uh, uh, it will end up in a few veins, and some hypertrophied smooth vessels in addition to the elastic connective tissue. Now, it has got a significant physiological uh, role in uh, keeping continence um, to help uh, sampling the uh, material in the bowel and uh, 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 contribute to the process of us being continent. Now, classically, these anal cushions are uh, located at 3, 7, and 11 o'clock in position. And that's by having the patients put in on the operating table in a little position, and 6 o'clock is the lower end, 12 o'clock is upward. Uh, and you could imagine the um, uh, hemorrhoids, one of them to the top left, one of them to the uh, uh, top right, and uh, one to the uh, bottom uh, right. So there are three, seven, eleven. That's the general characterization. Often they come in all forms and shapes, and they could be uh, situated or seen in different um, in different way. Now, what, happen, what does happen to get hemorrhoid? Um, hemorrhoid happens uh, mostly as a result of straining due to constipation. So, constipation itself is a, uh, a condition for having hemorrhoid, but does not actually cause hemorrhoid unless the patient strains heavily on the toilet. And that will increase intrarectal pressure, put pressure on the anal cushions, and they slide down, aided by the uh, gravity. Also, every now and then we find patients who doesn't have any of the, the symptoms. They're not constipated, they're not straining, but they have got bleeding hemorrhoids. And uh, this uh, is uh, also a frequent occurrence, and that is mainly due to excessive vascularity of the uh, anal uh, cushions. So about the anatomy, that's about all what we actually need to know today uh, with regard to uh, the... Uh, anatomy in relationship to the hemorrhoids. Uh, the anatomy of the anal area is more complex and I trust you will study that um, uh, elsewhere, but we just want to deal with the clinical problem of having hemorrhoids. Now we always uh, hear that uh, there are internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids and patients ask me are the, the hemorrhoids internal or external and, and they ask the difference so you have to uh, be prepared to explain it well to the patients. Now internal hemorrhoids are the prolapsed uh, actual anal uh, cushions and uh, internal hemorrhoids um, when they are causing problems they usually bleed. They uh, get eroded easily by hard fecal matter and they bleed more predominantly than prolapse. External hemorrhoids is the actual skin, the anoderm, that uh, lies below the dentate line, the sensitive part of the skin. And this hemorrhoid, or the external hemorrhoid, is in fact the hemorrhoid that gets dragged down by the prolapsing anal cushions and uh, the increased intra-abdominal pressure that pushes everything 
downward. And with time, they get bigger and bigger. So internal hemorrhoids are, uh, you could consider them as a tuft of uh, blood vessels that uh, could easily uh, bleed and could prolapse while external cushions as the anoderm or the uh, skin, skin part of the anal canal that is the lowermost part of the anal canal that uh, prolapses out. Usually patients will feel them as a lump uh, and uh, uh, it is a redundant skin that around the anal area which tend to be difficult to uh, clean in the uh, toilets. A very important thing is that uh, when a patient sees you for rectal bleeding, you ask them a, a simple question. Is the uh, blood fresh? Is it on the toilet paper? Is it uh, on the toilet uh, bowl? And you want to define the color and you want to see whether it's mixed with the actual bowel motions or not. Hemorrhoids cause the overwhelming majority of rectal bleeding. And it's a benign condition. Patient just need uh, reassurance and uh, need their hemorrhoid uh, dealt with, and some of them might need colonoscopy. We've got a third four type of uh, uh, hemorrhoid, which is the thrombosis hemorrhoids. So this is a very painful condition, typically seen in young male uh, laborer who lift uh, heavy uh, stuff and they are all the time on their feet. The hemorrhoid uh, prolapses out, and because of the nature of the area, the arterial blood supply will continue pumping blood into the tissues uh, while the venous return is uh, strangulated by the uh, tight anal uh, sphincter. They become very uh, painful and they could bleed internally and lead to perianal hematoma. So that's another form of, uh, of hemorrhoids or another presentation of uh, hemorrhoids. Now I repeat again, rectal bleeding, majority of the cases are caused by hemorrhoids and the blood is usually fresh, not altered in color. We worry if the blood is uh, mixed with the bowel motions or the color is uh, dark, which means that the uh, blood has come from, a, uh, from the upper uh, areas of the uh, colon or the small intestine or uh, uh, even the uh, stomach, uh, because when the blood spend any time inside the gastrointestinal tract, it gets deoxygenated and that gives it a dark maroon color. So if the patient comes in with a fresh bleeding, we try to reassure them and then we need to examine them and deal with them uh, appropriately and we'll come to that in the management. Uh, Sometimes people feel uh, lumpiness or just redundant skin in the perianal area and that's usually caused by external uh, hemorrhoids while the first, uh, which is the rectal bleeding, is caused by internal hemorrhoids. Most of the time people come in with the complaining of uh, pruritus as well, and they complain bitterly about an inability to uh, keep the hygiene in the uh, bottom end as a result of the uh, hemorrhoid, uh, which means that it needs to be uh, dealt with. We have to remember that uncomplicated hemorrhoids are painless. They might bleed, but they are painless. If there is a peri perianal pain, you need to think about the alternative diagnoses, such as a fissure, a, uh, an anal fissure, an abscess, or a uh, fistula. Perhaps thrombosis hemorrhoids are a source of uh, pain, uh, and it's a very painful uh, clinical condition that takes a while for uh, for it to uh, resolve and settle down. And I will explain the management of it shortly. Now, how do we diagnose these patients? Do we know if they have uh, any other condition? Uh, we assume that hemorrhoids, but we will have to uh, be careful and ensure that they don't have an alternative pathology. The examination starts with inspection, and with the inspection, you can only see the external hemorrhoids. They are redundant uh, the skin tags that could be easily seen around the uh, anal uh, area. I need to emphasize that when you, when you are trying to diagnose hemorrhoids, rectal examination, the digital rectal examination, is useful 
to rule out uh, lesions in the uh, rectum, such as low rectal cancer. Uh, but you won't be able to feel the hemorrhoids because the anal cushions and the hemorrhoids are uh, very soft. They are not a discrete lumpiness. They're just thickened bit of tissue and under examination, uh, if you are doing a digital rectal examination, you won't be able to feel the internal hemorrhoids. You will need a proctoscopy. And with the proctoscopy, you may, you may only see the internal hemorrhoids. And also the benefit of the proctoscopy in this situation is to rule out another pathology. Every now and then we see a patient who's been diagnosed with hemorrhoids, uh, uh, because they had fresh rectal bleeding, but in fact the underlying diagnosis is rectal cancer and often, uh, sadly, this could be in uh, young patients. Now, with the need for colonoscopy is an important issue. Uh, colonoscopy is being overused for, uh, for rectal bleeding, um, but unless there is a convincing uh, symptom don't need to offer everyone colonoscopy because they had uh, uh, fresh rectal bleeding that's 95% of the time going to be related to hemorrhoids. But if you have a patient above the age of 40 or the clinical story unusual or they are losing weight or they have abdominal pain or they're worried about uh, the family history with colon cancer, then yes, uh, a colonoscopy uh, is useful. Part of a tool, the uh, uh, any uh, malignant process, and the other path is really to reassure the patient uh, and put their mind at rest. Now, majority of hemorrhoids when we treat them, we treat them in, with medical uh, type of a treatment without uh, uh, major uh, intervention. Uh, we need to ask the patient and ensure that even if they are constipated, they do not strain in the toilet. They sit in the toilet and wait for things to happen. If it does not, then they need help with laxatives. Uh, and the laxatives can be uh, either in the form of uh, excessive fiber and fluid in the uh, diet or a uh, stimulant uh, such as Dalcolex. And there's a variety of uh, supplements that are available over the counter that a patient can use to uh, increase the softness uh, and the bulk of the stool to reduce the symptoms of constipation, uh, which is extremely uh, common clinical uh, scenario in the community. So we need them to modify their diet and uh, the uh, alternates uh, and to uh, that form of uh, advice, which is the diet advice, is to achieve regular and soft bowel motions. So the patient needs to understand that really well, and that will alleviate a lot of their suffering. Now, soothing agents can be quite useful, and there is an ointment called protocetum. It's over the counter and can be used, um, particularly if the area is a bit uh, uh, sore, and they're very useful for uh, discomfort caused by external hemorrhoids. Now, all, if all these uh, measures are uh, uh, not effective, then we move to uh, doing a rubber banding of the uh, hemorrhoids. Now, this is a simple uh, day case uh, procedure. Lots of surgeons do them in, in their uh, office. Uh, they produce the, uh, they introduce a proctoscope to engage the um, internal hemorrhoid inside and the under direct vision, they slip a rubber band around them and you can see that in the picture, a rubber band around the hemorrhoid and uh, that rubber band will slip off in a few days time. They will have bleeding, but you need to reassure them. They will have bleeding and they might, they might have a bit of uh, pain or discomfort uh, and you uh, uh, point out to them that uh, in the first 48 hour, uh, 24 hours, they feel the urge of going to the toilet uh, often there is nothing, no bowel motion to pass because they usually have their bowel uh, prepped and, uh, or had an enema uh, and they should uh, try to defer going to the toilet for 24 hours. This procedure is very effective and has reduced the need for surgical intervention in hemorrhoid by a great deal um, with minimal complications. The complications can be pain, can be uh, bleeding and very occasionally uh, sepsis can occur as a result of that. There are cases reported of subacute bacterial endocarditis following 
uh, banding of hemorrhoids. And you instruct the patient that uh, he they will have bleeding for the first up to about three weeks, uh, and uh, then the uh, mucosal uh, part of the hemorrhoid will slough off and uh, uh, disappear, and the results tend to be really effective in the long term. Now, surgery. Surgery uh, comes with a bit of a long history. Um, for decades and decades, uh, people have been doing the open hemorrhoidectomy. They just cut the hemorrhoids out, and it's called the Milligan-Morgan operation. Now, this operation, I try to avoid it as much as I can, unless there is really good uh, reason, which uh, is usually uh, skin tags outside the anal canal. Uh, the operation is very painful, and uh, most patients uh, report, report uh, to me pain that extends to about four to six weeks, and it is very uh, intense pain. The anal area is one of the most sensitive uh, parts of the human brain. They will have bleeding because uh, there is a raw wound, and every time they have the bowel uh, go to the toilet, they, to open their bowel, there will be blood, and there will be uh, a lot of pain. Sepsis can occur as a result, as a result of the surgery. Anal stenosis, if the surgeon is too uh, enthusiastic and uh, removes a lot of hemorrhoids, and that complication uh, by itself is a real uh, issue because uh, it will need a lot of treatment in, in the forms of dilatation or uh, ZY plasty and, uh, and so forth in terms of re. re to reconstruct the anal canal. Uh, that happens if the surgeon cuts too much in, uh, of the uh, anal canal and too big. Sphincter damage can happen, uh, and uh, when we say sphincter, it's usually the internal sphincter that can get damaged, and patients can lose control on uh, passing weight. More recently, there have been an increase popularity in ligating the internal hemorrhoids. Uh, and this is done by a surgeon who introduces the uh, protoscope and there is a, um, a Doppler uh, probe in there and the Doppler uh, probe will uh, identify the internal hemorrhoidal artery and they tend to ligate them something like several centimeters above the dentate uh, line. And they also plicate the uh, mucosa of the uh, hemorrhoids and then they tie them together. You got to see this procedure to be able to understand how it works. But you basically uh, cutting the blood supply to the internal, uh, you know, to the anal cushions and lifting them up toward the uh, rectum. Uh, this procedure, although it's mainly designed to deal with internal hemorrhoid, it will help with external hemorrhoid because it will help to lift the inner half of the anal canal upward, and subsequently the lower half will, will follow. An important category of uh, uh, hemorrhoidal uh, disease is the thrombosis hemorrhoids. This disease uh, occurs mainly in uh, uh, young male, usually uh, labor, who spend all, the, all their time uh, own their feet in the building industry or any other industry that requires physical uh, job, the hemorrhoid can prolapse and uh, if they do not get rectified back into the anal canal manually, they will stay outside. And when they stay outside, they will become congested and engorged because that process will cover the venous return while the arterial uh, supply is still pumping the blood into them. And eventually, uh, one of these vessels will burst and lead to formation of a perianal hematoma. They tend to be very painful uh, process. When we see them, we try to uh, retrieve them, again, non-operatively, with the ice packs, uh, prococetal ointments, uh, local uh, uh, analgesia, and uh, uh, painkillers taken uh, orally, in addition to laxatives, uh, and we keep surgery as the last resort. We try not to operate on them unless they are not settling, very down, uh, settling down very well, uh, or the patient is demanding uh, a procedure 
uh, done. So the bottom line of, uh, of this that we, I need you to, uh, to take away from this uh, lecture is how to diagnose hemorrhoids, simple method of uh, treat them medically, and the available surgical methods uh, that uh, uh, are available to us to uh, treat them and the choice of the uh, operation. Uh, banding has taken over the, uh, ex the external uh, open operation that used to be so commonly in the past because uh, banding proved to be very effective. Be aware of rectal bleeding. Make sure that you, you're dealing with hemorrhoids and there's no lesion in the rectum that um, uh, is uh, causing the uh, bleeding. And that uh, uh, lesion in the rectum could be either inflammatory or malignant. And it is an uh, 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 important thing that you don't miss uh, such an important pathology. Uh, Another point I emphasize on is that hemorrhoids are either internal where they bleed and they only need to be banded or they are external and uh, uh, the external hemorrhoids you try to treat, the, uh, treat them non-operatively again uh, and do not uh, uh, get tempted to cut them out because um, the aftermath seems to be quite painful to the patient. The newly designed uh, hemorrhoidal uh, artery ligation is uh, a, a good operation that uh, has been used more and more uh, lately uh, with uh, great results and small risk of complications. Uh, and usually there is no much pain. Uh, and that's, that's the main issue that uh, uh, w wants you to avoid doing uh, an open excisional surgery for hemorrhoids. You try to keep that to the last resort. Thank you very much for staying with me with this uh, uh, video. And I hope you have uh, uh, learned uh, a lot from it. And uh, I look forward to see you in the uh, next recordings.